Um, it's my pleasure to present Mar Santa Maria and Pablo Martinez. Um, they're part of the YAC family. Uh, they're part of our faculty here at IAC, both in the Master in City and Technology and in the Master in Advanced Architecture. So it's even more a pleasure for us to have them here. Um, I'll just give you a few notes on them. So Mar and Pablo are the co-founders of a design studio which is called 300.000 kilometers per segundo. Um, and they are specialized in data analysis and visualization applied to urban design. So they're both architects, multidisciplinary architects, um, and they integrate other disciplines and design tools into their uh, practice. So their idea is to propose new ways to depict subjective and objective mechanisms taking place in cities through human place transactions and collective dynamics. Um, and they also develop the tools to be able to do this. Uh, so I'd like you to help me in welcoming Mar and Pablo and uh, their lecture on If Forms Follow Behaviors. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah, super. Uh, thanks, Marty, for the presentation. So uh, I just want to clarify that we have a urban design studio. That's, that's important. <laughs> And also that uh, we are both architects. We came from the School of Architecture of Barcelona, which is very classic. So we are very happy to be here today uh, at Jack because for us, Jack, no, since we were students, but, uh, it has been a reference of, of what innovation means. So we really want to thank uh, Marco, uh, Matil, Silvia, Arreti, and Vicente for the work and uh, for the interest you have shown in, in our work. Work, uh, and also to all the students that we have met in this first year at Jack. Uh, the field work of our studio uh, is the city, and it's a city in, in different scales. You know, the idea that city can be a state, we can have group of cities, and uh, you know, cities relate to each other, and we are concern um, about how the cities of the future uh, should be. You know? We understand that these cities should transform uh, you know, if you want to, to inhabit this, you know, the, the world. And then we have to live better uh, uh, in these cities. So global challenges uh, are clear. So reducing emissions, feeding people, managing energy, better communicate. But for us, no, it's, it's difficult to, to give a clear answer of how to achieve no, uh, an answer to this challenge and an answer that might be able uh, to give form. That's important, to give form uh, to, uh, to these cities. Uh, we have to confess, we, we don't have answer. Uh, but we believe that by working in a specific uh, cases, we, 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 sh we should be able, no, we would be able to, to understand how to face these problems of, of cities. And for us, oh, sorry. <laughs> um, To be able to understand, uh, we need to represent, we need to describe, we need to draw different situations, different urban situations. To be able to do three things that we think uh, they are important. Uh, measuring, visualizing, but also uh, being able to communicate. So, um, if we can measure and apply uh, no, this complex analysis no, uh, methodologies to urban problems, we think uh, we can no, make a, an important thing that it's that urban design should become another time a, a science. No, uh, for for a long time, uh, cities have been designed because there was a genius, no, like Sir Dad and make a Champla, no. So urban design, uh, we believe that should be again uh, a science and and now we have the new methodologies new analysis methodologies that have been no that are empowered by digital tools and goldification but 
no, probably the, the, the problems of the city are atemporal, uh, they are also universal, so we think that maybe we are not making the, the right questions, no? And we should give maybe a different point of view to, to, this, no? this, to these questions. And indeed, um, urbanism uh, now is not only about constructing, but also it's about this idea of uh, regenerating, no? And, and for, for a long time, no? Um, urbanism, urbanism has to do with form, okay? But now we think that urban design has to do with use, no? How this use deform the form, and we should uh, give, no? Or we should use um, new layers, uh, of analysis and intervention in urban planning that take into account you know, how citizens are interacting with the city, not only talking about form. So the purpose of the lecture is not uh, talking about the projects, you know, something that we do a lot in the studios or in the seminars, but to give a transversal view of, of the work we have been doing in the past three years and be able to talk about these you know, uh, little or small answers that, that have been arising from this, you know, these uh, different questions. So we are going to do something strange, which is a uh, beginning, you know, the lecture at the end. You no, know? we are going to explain what we have now in the table, the last project, which is a uh, you not know, we have been commissioned to represent uh, in a map uh, how the conflict uh, in Ukraine has been going on in the past two years uh, uh, for the Biennale of Venice. And no, this is our latest project. No, no. Um, and curiously, uh, we have seen that some strategies that we have been using to obtain information uh, of this contemporary city can be used to deal uh, with a situation where no, there is this, 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 this huge crisis, crisis. So imagine that during war we have no data at all, or even if no, if we have data, it's not qualitative. It's different, no, it depending on the site of the no of the world. So this data is very poor. Um, and the, the usual strategies, no statistics that are something that the states use to know what's happening are very slow. No? We are sure that no, uh, statistics and studies uh, are, no, are, are going on, but this data is going to be released when, when this conflict it, no, will, will be ended. So the same happens with cities. No? Uh, sometimes we need to have no, this information to intervene at the moment, not when the things had already happened in the cities. And this project, no, uh, here we have no, uh, a map which is showing how the, no, the frontiers, uh, this is no, uh, one of the, yeah, Pablo, maybe, no? Here, <laughs> there's one. It's very strange that he's going to move uh, <laughs> the mouse for me. So uh, here we have those, uh, two cities, the one in the south who remain in Ukraine, and the one in the north, which is Donetsk, now is, is, no, is, is Russian. So here we have this idea of, of moving borders. No? Uh, during war, this frontier is, no, has been, have been moving. And city is about this idea of borders. No? Here we have the political no? and, uh, division of the metropolitan area of Barcelona, and you can see you know, that every municipality has its own limit. But uh, this no, ideal no, or administrative uh, dimension has another uh, subjective dimension uh, that has to do uh, with people using this territory, no, of the identity of people uh, no, by moving or by understanding which areas of the territory they, they feel as their own. So territory is, is no, something we feel is very subject subjective. No, in time, as we have seen no, in this frontier of, of if this border of Ukraine which was moving, but also depending on the person. So here we have a superimposition, no? we have the borders, ad administrative borders in, in black, and in, Barcelona. Yeah, of Barcelona. 
Uh, and then these green no, um, surfaces are no, the, um, the tags of Flickr photographs no, that had to do with this. Uh, different municipalities. So we can see this idea that no, the, the ideal dimension and the real dimension are not overlapping in, in, in this territory. So, and that's interesting because traditionally, uh, no, this idea of identity has to do with, no, with heritage. No? Heritage monuments are this no, layer where no, uh, everyone no, identifies, no? it's the construction of the, a collective memory, a history. And this is a map no, of the heritage of Barcelona uh, in red and no, on magenta we have the monuments. Uh, this heritage normally works no, with this idea of the areas of protection and protecting objects. No? It's something very, no, identity is very related to this idea of an object, of an architecture. And indeed, no, in the following image, when we see, no, this is the, the social interactions uh, of Flickr and Twitter in Barcelona during three months, we see that this identity is not more related no, uh, to, our jobs, to objects in this contemporary city, but with citizens. When we filter no, all this mass of points uh, using the tag Barcelona, that's a very old image, but <laughs> now we love it uh, a lot, we can see a very clear form of the city. We can recognize Pasel de Gracia, we can recognize no, Pedrera, we can recognize the sea, even if this identity, you know, when it came up, both of us, it wasn't our identity, but it was some, no? <laughs> some people's identity. So, the built container is one thing, okay, and how the inhabitants are using it is another question. So here we jump um, to, no, uh, to this territory of the metropolitan area of Barcelona, where we no longer see no, these spots no, of, uh, of, of people identifying it as Barcelona, but a very no, extensive built surface um, of the territory. So, how are the inhabitants oh, of this area? Um, this is the demography aggregated no, in each block. We can see the number of inhabitants, the more lighter, uh, yeah, the more inhabitants we have. And we see something that is very you know, particular of Barcelona, that we have a center which is losing population. No? The heart of the city is no longer the identitary place. No? No, nobody is living there. But in this other image, which represents the number of workers, okay, we have per each block, we see that the center, it has an activity, no? it has a lot of people that every day goes to work no? to this area. So there's no? a new no? ingredient comes up, this idea that people is moving around the territory, and we have this balance no? between people leaving it, but people working on it. So, that's interesting, no? How these two um, identities are, are are overlapping. No, this this somehow uh, synthesizes a little bit, no? Uh, in the area, no? In the central area, No, uh, we can see in this yellow. Okay, this is the overlapping of it, these two layers of workers and and inhabitants and this central area of Paseo de Gracia we have no this mix and in th we have other areas where they are not mixing at all I need a This is a small <laughs> A small animation uh, showing you know, this idea that the socio-demographic characteristics of a city or a neighborhood you know, are variable and you know, are variable also in, in this temporal dimension. You know? Here we are seeing you know, how the city is being fed you know, with all the you know, workers coming to work, you know, all the people you know, who's going to you know, with the kids to school, eh, and you know, people sleeping. So this 
variable idea of, of demography, no? Demography has been something always very statistical, but we, we believe we can offer a, no, a more flexible approach to, no, to this idea. And not also we want to talk no, in our work of inhabitants. No? Uh, he, he, and I think it, this is a very interesting uh, image when we can see inside the block, no, each point is an, an inhabitant. But in the street we have also activity. No? We have the activity in this case, uh, no, it's the activity of caps, but we have this idea that in the street uh, we have activity. So we believe we have to design the city to cover all these profiles. We have to know to give solutions to the inhabitants, but also to the people who are wandering in the streets, but also to other types of people which are tourists. We jump, no? Mainly, we will see today images of Barcelona, but now we jump to Madrid. This is a project we we done for a main bank in Spain last year, and we are, we think that in a very close time uh, we are going to reproduce it uh, here in Barcelona. And we have the superimposition of of to, no of tourists and nationals. Nationals are in magenta, and tourists in green. So we have the superimposition in the central area when we have white. So each profile, no nationals, no locals and tourists, have different geometries within the city. No, they overlap or not overlap uh, in different places. And if we no we analyze in more detail. Um, how these tourists are moving, we can see that each nationality has its own pattern. So, for example, we have Chinese, you know, that they move exclusively you know, in luxury areas around you know, this neighborhood of, of Castellana. But then we have Americans that you know, they are everywhere in the city. Tourists, no, we have seen in Madrid, have a huge impact in public space, but in the case of Barcelona, no, there's also an impact no, on, on, on the areas where they sleep. No? So here we represent the influence uh, of cities, are you sorry, of, of tourists. We represent where they are sleeping, so the hotels and the Airbnb uh, uh, apartments around the city. So you can see that there are areas, no, like Ciutat Bella, especially Plaza Real, when we have a lot of pressure, no, because we had a lot of hotels, we had a lot of Airbnb. This phenomenon of tourism um, enables us to, to talk about, you know, uh, I think we, 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 we really think it's important in the city, is this idea that we have completely loose borders. You know? As we can see here, tourists, you know, there are areas where you know, this, this phenomenon is more intense, but tourists are everywhere in the city. You know? Tourism is widespread within the city. So the city has no longer you know, these frontiers, these borders, Borders. And that puts a little bit urban design no? or the way we design cities in crisis. No? This idea that we are not more able to trace no? a line, to put, no? to design a line dividing no? what's happening on one side of the street of the other. So that's important, the idea of we, no, we have phenomenons no? that make the border disappear. But um, on the other side, we have borders in the cities. We have physical borders, we have you know, barriers. This is another image that, you know, that came from this um, Madrid uh, study. And here we can see the commercial relationships between uh, different neighborhoods of Madrid. So normally, as you can see, you know, uh, people is going to buy something to the nearest neighborhood. So, you no, know, these relationships, you no, know, these relations are very close. But when we analyze the problem in a very huge scale, at the scale of the whole city, we can see that these relations are not longer of proximity. You no, know? we have a neighborhood which have a very important, you no, know, or huge relation, but we can see a lot of this continuity. And these continuities um, should be explained you now by different reasons. You no, know, that
so this cryptic video okay is showing a research uh, we have been commissioned by the habitat Urba, um, department of, of the city hand council and the objective was to understand uh, where the, in, the innovative no, initiatives were located within the city and which was the relationship between them no we can see in this no map which seems a, a topography no that we have peaks we have this area of popular now no, with a lot of innovative initiatives we have also central area which no has this huge concentration but we so we we also have valleys no within this to no, well, no, two main important areas. If we see no, the same image in a, in a more detail, um, here we are representing the topological relation, the relations between three different types no, of agents, which will be uh, research centers, uh, uh, leader yeah, companies, and then also small startups, magenta for the startups, yellow for the research centers, and no, yellow for the companies, sorry, and, and blue for the, um, for the research centers. And here we are seeing this idea that there are areas in the city which enable no, a positive transference of knowledge. So this, no, this innovation can be easily spread around the city. But we have also areas no, like this blue lines no here yeah we can no <laughs> indeed draw this line uh, between two areas no i think you may recognize one of these no uh, with this area with teatro nacional no uh, akbar no uh, glorias uh, where we have a very important uh, discontinuity between no there are two urban fabrics which no are innovative and can, are really 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 close within the city but they are not connecting. And that can be explained seeing this other, um, no, this other cartography. And here we are representing all the urban uses we have uh, in the metropolitan area. In blue, you have the industry. In red, you have the commerce. And in green, you have offices. And overlapping no, with the RGBV uh, superimposition, you have the, the idea of the mixing. So what happens between no, these two areas is that we have a lot of, no, of urban services and a lot of residents. So the idea of sometimes having a monofunctional users, no, it's it's, a, it's an important uh, border uh, within the city, and we have to be aware that no, uh, normally something it's something that came up no to me when I was preparing to lecture no, we have been told no in the school that housing no it's what makes the city no housing is everywhere but productive no fabric it's important and no nowadays it should be inside the city no and it's another important no or key asset we have to take into account and in this sense no this map is representing how no these economic activities are, are placed not only you know, in the area of Barcelona, but in, in, on, in all the region. And what we can see that this idea of diversity, and here we are going to start talking about no, this idea of diversity, is something that can be very, you know, can be very positive when regarding to you know, when, when we are talking about uh, economic activities. So here we, we have represent the, the, you know, the dot size is the number of companies we have. Uh, I'm telling, see, see, no? sorry, it's not a big one. <laughs> uh, but in the blue areas, we have a lot of companies and a lot of diverse companies. And what came up is that also we had a lot of workers. No? So diversity is positive, no? and it's positive in, in this more economic profit. So we could extrapolate this idea no? of. of of, of positive diversity to, to the rest of the city uh, in these following images. Uh, when we are no, we are also seeing this superimposition, no, is this a very bright no image. I'm a little bit confused <laughs> somehow. But when we can see that no uh, Barcelona, no, one of the main no um, no characteristics of the urban model is this idea of, of being very uh, very diverse. And these different layers um, behave different. So maybe yeah. 
Uh, industry normally is related no, to infrastructure. No? Offices are placed inside the city. And there's a layer that for us it's very important, which is no, commerce. Okay? This is no, all the commerce, all the shops, all the bars, all the you know, grocery stores we have in Barcelona. You can see that it's a perfect match no, with the drawing of the city. And that's important because uh, no commerce, it's, it's a service for the city. For us, no, having a, a commerce that no, has, no, has, a, has a low rotation, uh, that it's successful, gives us quality to the city. Uh, here in Madrid, no, we represent this, this idea of, of shops that were opening in green, okay, and shops that, that were closing. And we can see in the next image that we have a problem that we had when we have no, this red no, neighborhood that has all the, all the shops are closing there. No? That's, that's not an, a, a problem of the poor no? person who <laughs> invests in the shop, but this is a urban problem. So understanding how no, this commercial activity works, it's very important. And we no, mostly have done it in a very generic way, but now you know, we have the tools to do it in a more specific way. So here, no, uh, and that's Madrid uh, uh, again, we have this duality between a, no, a, f no, a form which is no, spread uh, around the city and an economic activity which is really concentrated, okay? The first one uh, was no, bar and restaurants, you can imagine no, that's Spain. <laughs> and in the following one, we have the fashion, no? Fashion in Madrid is concentrated in two areas. One of you, no, one of them is Plaza del Sol. You maybe will be able to recognize it. And the other is, uh, no, the luxury, no, area uh, around Castellana. And fashion for us, uh, no, when we were making this project, was so important that we decided not to analyze it, no, uh, further, because it take uh, the 20 percent of the money, uh, the 25 percent of all the uh, the money spent in Madrid is spent in fashion, no? It's it's a huge proportion of, of this expenditure. And we, we, we have seen, and it's something that in Barcelona is the same, and I imagine in, in, in most of, of your cities it's the same, that we have this fast fashion, uh, this is called the so fast fashion, H&M, Zara, this fast fashion um, no, um, commerce, and then we have the luxury, no? In, no? In, blue the, in blue the fast fashion, and in, in, in yellow the luxury. And, co and that was a, a little bit a surprise or a paradox for us that uh, the luxury um, commerce give a more, give a, I, I wouldn't say better city, but uh, we have more uh, offices, we have more housing, so we have this idea of mixing uses, okay? Uh, it was placed in small plots, uh, and as we will see in the next uh, image, it gives a high um, profit uh, regarding to the square meters it spends on the city. Yeah. Fast fashion is the one on the, yeah, on your right, left, sorry, <laughs> and the other, the one on the left. Um, on the other side, uh, the fast fashion um, was placed no? in, cen in, yeah, in, in central areas. It takes very big plots, so it needs very important surface, and it expulses every other urban users. So that's very dangerous because no, you have a lot of surface that no, one Sara and Mango and H&M will decide that they won't longer want to be there. They are going to be reused. And this reuse, it, it, it would not be easy, no? because you know, plots will be bigger and you know, uh, it will be more complicated to regenerate you know, the, these areas. So this idea of having you know, um, specialization, you know, it's dangerous, no? it's, 
it's something we have to deal with, but also having too much diversity is something that also can generate conflict. And that's one no, we are experimenting here in Barcelona, uh, especially in Ciutat Bella. Um, we know for three years we have been carrying on a, a project which is called At Night and we try to understand what happened no, with the nocturnal landscape in Barcelona and here we made no, this cartography to understand what happened when we superimpose no, three activities as nightclubs, okay, uh, hotels, and restaurants, no? You can see that with these three layers, we had no a special dark area, uh, no, uh, in the city center. But what is important is that no, in this image we mask no some some parts uh, by using no the 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 amount of square meters we have of of housing. Okay, we we start understanding that. Uh, in the nocturnal hours here in Ciutat Bella we have a problem. So the idea of the high diversity is all is something that we no we should deal with. So we have seen that no this mixing or how these uses um, are mixing it's something important. But also it's no it's important to understand the distance between these uses. And here, what we are, what you are seeing, is the pattern of of um, expenditures of men and women. Okay. Women, we are magenta. Okay. Men, you are blue. Okay. So you can see here that women uh, shop in a very concentrated way. No, in in a very. <laughs> No, in, no, just forming clusters or hubs, no, this idea of the commercial no, axis. And men shop in very scattered places all around the city. And they are very, 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 very far. So this, no, this image uh, was not very useful to reflect no, about these two mobilities. No? Normally, we have been um, understanding mobility no, from this idea of capacity, velocity. No? Here we have this representation of no, all the high no, infrastructures um, in the metropolitan area. But no, seeing these patterns no, of, of women, we, th we think we should change no, this. No? Big, big, big mobility to a, a slow mobility. No, being slow, it it, it will be it will matter, you know, in these uh, future cities. And here, no, we have you know, on the other side all the pathways and all no the um, no the streets uh, in the metropolitan area no that are friendly no to no to walk. And here again, no, we have this idea of what is discontinuous. No, we had no in the previous no image a network which was very no very or really well connected. And here we see that this network is no is broken. No, it's not no. We need to find what is no uh, between. That may uh, no, or that make us reflect no uh, when no working no in in this project and it's something no that we no it has remained in our minds that maybe no when facing no the the, the idea of mobility what we need is not to have uh, tools no to talk about what is quantitative but to talk about no what is uh, qualitative. And it's something we had, we have to, no, or we have tried to do uh, in this project for uh, the Taul, no, Leish Peracuar, no, which is a participative, a participative project going on now uh, in Barcelona. And here we represent, no, there was a, a survey uh, where, no, all the neighborhoods in Poplano were asked if they use Peracuar and how they use the. Um, 
the city. And we can see no, here different no, answers they gave no, according to the age, to the gender. And you can see that the images no, and the territories that no, came from um, are very different. So that's interesting to understand that people decide to, no, to walk from one part of the city to the other because maybe they like it more or maybe because it's more comfortable, no, because they go to school or they no, do their shopping. So this idea of the path of, the pathway of going no, of mobility is not more functional. No? It's something that is very no, qualitative. Yes, they can. I'm going to be very sure because <laughs> it's Friday. <laughs> uh, I'm, yeah, yeah, we are just arriving to the end uh, because we want questions also. So, no, you would say at this point, no, no, three trescientos mil, no. <laughs> Um, no, we have said, no, uh, said to this, no, to this moment that we have, no, or, or through our projects, we have been able to identify that the city has no, no, this idea of not more having borders, no, and as a consequence or, or as a cause, no, this idea of that we have overlapping identities in in a city. We really uh, like this image. It's the first image, no, we have, no made uh, from the beginning. No, we start by the end and we will <laughs> finish with the beginning of our no, design process. So, no, at this point we have the city with no borders, so with these overlapping identities. We have a city which is made uh, of relations, but also of course of things that are, no, not, are not relating. Um, also a complex planification of these urban uses, so we, we no, it's, it's difficult to understand no, where we have to put things if we know that diversity is something positive, but it's something we no, somehow need to administrate, but we, because we can create specialization or we can create no, other conflicts. And also that the, the idea that the, the city is made of no of this distance that should be qualitative uh, no? and not more quantitative. So no, we have this no this scenario, but also we have a city, no, in the case of Barcelona, which has been constructed no during two thousand years. And what we have made is to make form, no? to construct, to build uh, this territory. Imagine that in the last 40 years, we consume the same territory of the 2000 previous years. So we are at a point no? where no? the perspective is that the city is not going to grow anymore. But we will have no, to regenerate or to rethink what we already have, no? or the idea of to manage no? what we already have. So, how can we make <laughs> urban planning no? uh, in, this, no? in this situation, which is extremely, extremely, extremely complex? No? Um, the ills no, or the problems of mankind uh, have been created by, our, by ourselves. We have created cars, we have created pollution, but also we have created the tools no, or the methodologies that are going to no, help no, uh, solve the problems we ourselves have, no, have created. So we think that in this case, no, having a better knowledge of the city, being able to understand no, more accurately what's going on, it's very important. And it's true, no, this idea of having new analysis methodologies, these new design tools no, related to digital and to data that we can no, offer this new perspective. So, how to do it? No? We have no, I said we had no answer, but we have some <laughs> lines of work. The first thing, no, it's to know better uh, the urban fabric, okay? This is a project we have been developing with YAC, okay? That is a platform, a platform that um, 
make us able to datificate no? uh, the buildings, no? be able to have inside uh, each, each building a lot of information regarding its surface, but other no? interesting parameters. So first thing, being able to know no? this extension of territory we have from, no? this, this, it's more built aspect. Then, of course, no? knowing how citizens are behaving, no? which are the interactions. No? And it's something that is very related no? to digital, no? to your digital <laughs> mobiles, to these digital interactions that enable us to describe in a very, very accurate way how no? the people is behaving in this, no? in this territory. And it's something that in the case of Barcelona, Sometimes we you know we have at the beginning, you no, know, when we were starting a little bit our work, some you no, know, some people or some critics we receive uh, were on the line that it was very unrealistic, you no, know, to design with data. So in a study uh, that has been published a few, a few months ago, uh, and we participate on it. Um, we know that Barcelona no, is the context where planning with data can be possible because the penetration of digital technologies is complete. No? This is a study that no, the City Council uh, commissioned to the Mobile World uh, Capital Foundation uh, to understand which was the digital divide in Barcelona, if there were situations no, of, of extremely vulnerability. And generally, the penetration of digital technologies is total. So no, the accuracy of the data we can get is total, no, and we can no, be able to design with data. But no, on the other side, we are, con we are aware that there are situations no, in this context of, no, of, 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 of non-digital divide where there are still uh, situations as extreme poverty where there's no data. Homeless people doesn't exist as data. So this is a, no, a project we are very proud and it's going to become a reality in, in a very few days. We have been collaborating with the Rails Foundation um, no, which helps people that has no home, okay, that they sleep uh, in the street, to make a datification of these people, to make these people present. And we like you know, this project a lot to close because you know, it's very illogical. We are going to count you know, uh, by using uh, almost 1,000 no, volunteers. Uh, during one night, uh, these people sleeping in the street, and we are no, putting face, making visible no, uh, this problematic. Yeah. So thank you. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Mar and Pablo, for your lecture. We are, we love you. You know it. <laughs> And we are super proud to have uh, your lecture here today, also because uh, you really rep represent this kind of um, uh, new architects we are trying to, to form, no? Because it, it wasn't so, you didn't really stress on this point, but uh, being architects, you are able to put the right, to ask the right questions, and uh, with so much availability of data, you are able to extract the, the, the conclusion and to understand which are the data that make sense uh, put into a relation, which is. Uh, um, <laughs> thanks, Chantur. <laughs> which is something that is very important because um, we architects have still the, the capability to understand the, t the, the cities, but we need these, these new tools. And so you are this live demonstration of uh, our belief. So thank you for <laughs> that. <laughs> All right. So I guess I hope that public have some uh, intriguing questions for our guests. For example, Edward. <laughs> Are you going to inaugurate the session of questions? Thanks. A nasty question. <laughs> um, there is a lot of content. There is a lot of uh, maps, which uh, not only they're, they're beautiful, they're also um, 
really communicate a lot and, and make us understand a lot. Um, I imagine for you two who are architects, the fact that you um, that you get information, you process it, and then you display it. Uh, I can imagine that sometimes it's difficult for you to to um, because you are observers, you know, and and uh, and as architects, we we observe a lot, and we and we try to act on the basis of the observations that we that we did. Um, and I think, uh, as much as I enjoy a lot what you show on the screen. Um, it's a lot of maps, and sometimes I was wondering to what extent you, you would want to show um, other things than maps. And, and so the question would be, if you were not allowed to show maps, um, and Hello. talk about all the work that, you, that you've been doing, what would you show? <laughs> Every question. <laughs> Next. <laughs> <laughs> Next, please. <laughs> okay. So, I think that our work is based on maps, so it's impossible. So, we, I, I can imagine how we can work without maps. So, our first step in our work is don't understand how the people is planning today without this information. So, I can speak without this information. So we are afraid when we go to the city councils, when we go to the planning studios, and they only have the topographical plot of the city. Uh, the designers need uh, work with, with plans, with documents that we can share with our colleagues, no? and documents that they are able to explain ideas. No? If we can share the ideas, with, no, if we, we don't have this, no, this paper, uh, is the, no, these papers to share the ideas, it's not possible. So, I think that our exercise, perhaps we try to, to make this kind of, explana of explanation with a lot of documentation, but because we need to, to explain that it's necessary. No, I think that we have forget how important it is to render out the, the city on the, no, on the again, no? uh, and every year we need to, to find, to describe each new dimension that appears in the city. Sometimes the urbanism is based on perceptions, singular perceptions, intuitions that they are come from the perceptions, no? from singular perception, and this is very dangerous. We need the, the document, but the document, not like an administrative uh, form, no, but the idea of how to share my my idea with the others, no, and put uh, together around this this concept, no. I think that in the last years, I, I don't know. I, uh, when I say last years, I mean uh, 30 years. So <laughs> a lot of time, no, that the documents of urbanists are very bad. Pablo's smart answer <laughs> without a map. <amount. laughs> Other questions? Maria, yeah, I have a little question. Uh, thank you very much for your lecture. I enjoy a lot the information that you are presenting. Your work is very beautiful. Um, I was thinking in the maybe the start of the lecture when you started to show your maps and when you started to speak more not about the physical kind of uh, matter of the city but more kind of informational matter of the city. And I was kind of thinking about myself going every time to Pyrenees here uh, next to Barcelona. No? For example, going to Pucherda. And I go there, for example, on Saturday, you know, just to spend their beautiful weekend. I go to Pucherda, I walk on the street, and I understand that it's not Pucherda, it's extended Barcelona. So that the city is not physical anymore, that there is kind of, it's just the city is expanded. But then if I go to Pucherda on Thursday, and I go there, I see that this is Pucherda, it's not extended Barcelona anymore. <laughs> and from here, I'm starting to think, okay, so it's changing over the time, it's changing over the, so the distance, the scale, of the city is changing over the maybe even the days, no, in the week. The Barcelona is expanding and then sucking mm -hmm. back. No? And I'm st kind of questioning myself uh, and based on your lecture, what is now the definition of the city? How do you define the city just for yourself? And of course, kind of, I, I guess that this is the question that you're putting on the table. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, 
of us, I understand that this, I'm not asking you the correct definition, but what is the city for you? Kind of, how, how, which are the, let's say, components of the definition? I think perhaps the answer is where are the citizens? Yeah. Because then the problem is to identify who are, and yeah. I think it was also at the beginning of the, the lecture, uh, where are the citizens of the, of the city? No? Because we know that the citizens, uh, we don't live here, but we are here all the day, no? so we live in, in this piece of Poplo. No? We are not from the neighborhood for the city council. We don't count no? from a part of this, of this neighborhood, but we live here more hours perhaps than a lot of people people who has his residence in here, but we, we have here an example of a lot of people, no? They are not from yeah, uh, Spain, from they are not from Europe, but they live here and they are here, no? And it's the, it's the amount of people who makes the city, no? And, and I think that it's more important that the, the idea of the borders, no? That is very complex. When you are analyzing the, the urban phenomena, it's very strange for us to put a line in the map, no? And this is the, the eternal question every time we, we do something, no? Where we need to put the line, no? Where, where we finish to, to draw if all is continuous. We, we stop where we don't have people, no? But we have people moving, no? <laughs> and then we don't want to stop to draw, no? And we have this relation, no? And I think that yeah. the, the idea and I, and I think that it's, no? We think we are combined set with this, no? That we need to change the, yeah. the, the borders of the city and understanding where is the, the amount of population, no? And this population that not only has the residents, they work and they live, no? And they are coming to visit, no? And all together they do the, the city. This is not answer, is an answer about borders, no? Also too, but <laughs> I just wanted to make you speak a bit longer. <laughs> Anyone else have a question? Yeah, now come the question from the students. Hello. My question is in two parts. I mean, I understand that a lot of these visualizations rely heavily on data. So uh, one of the things that we found normally is the it relies to, to give an accurate or conclusion. You need really, really good quality data. So what is your methodology or procedure mm -hmm. to uh, cross-reference or validate the data that you obtain, one, and two, uh, then how do you start to define different resolutions of data? So one can be the population of dem demographics, for instance, of a certain area, but then when it comes to the block scale, the different type of resolution is gonna give you a different type of conclusion. Mm -hmm. So from personal uh, challenges that I've encountered, that is something that I want to see what your strategy or your method, method to, okay. to challenge it. Okay. <laughs> First thing, no, it's to have the data, no, I would say. It. And that's not difficult, and that's a big part of our work. No? So once no, we have the data, I will explain very subject subjectively. Eh? Uh, once no, uh, we have the data, and it's something that maybe we, we explain in more detail in class, um, what we do is to represent it, no? Just make a lot, a lot, no? A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of growing, showing different aspects of this data. Because we believe that population, no, or I don't know, energy is going to talk about another thing. So, you know, this idea of, of always finding, no, transversal, no? Uh, reading to this data we are having, no? So it is by you know by this uh, plotting in a, no in this case it's not a paper no <laughs> you know we use digital tools but this idea of of, of doing you no know, drawing and drawing and drawing and representing and superimposing that we are able no to get conclusions uh, we are different no there's a lot of uh, we didn't no we 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 try not to use the word big data no it's something that maybe in class we use okay in this lecture there's a lot of no of research teams no working on the same line we are no we are um, doing like it would be not to use uh, data to, for urban design but they maybe they do, yeah, they use algorithms and and they don't do no this 
this step of representation for us is crucial no, to be able to draw. And according to the resolution, uh, no, I think no, uh, you point out something that it's very interesting, no, that we can get different conclusions depending on the resolution of the, of the data. So most of the time, no, our work also in the studio is to find strategies to no, change the aggregation of the data. No? We love no, the most accurate we can, no, we can be with the map, the most precise and the most no, uh, accurate would be the, no, the answer we can give to, no, to um, a urban question. In any case, today, work with, the, work with data, um, it's very important to understand that it's time you have a, a new data set and the world begins from zero. This is, uh, this is the problem of big data. So when you are working with the statistics, you, you know that you have methodological problems, problems. No? and that they are ever the same. No? And you can have the ever strategies, no? the same strategies uh, to solve it. No? But, but big, with big data, for example, all the work that we have done with, with BBVA, you know, this, uh, this work about Madrid. Um, there was a lot of urban conclusions, but there was a lot of conclusions talking about how they need to change their data. So representing the data, putting face, not only talking about in an Excel spreadsheet, no? So we have discovered uh, how it was uh, not very well done, no? So, and, and this is a problem, I think that the answer, it's very difficult to say, no? How we solve it, because our war is solve it every day, no? And find a solution every day. Hi. Hi. Uh, I want to ask about uh, informal economy and informal <laughs> activities in the city. And uh, how, if do you think it's, is there a way to map it? I mean, really informal activities, even commercial activities or criminal or prostitution, drug dealing, this kind of stuff. Uh, informal building, uh, like we know that there is a lot of uh, informal building around the cities, in the, on the borders, new, uh, these new neighborhoods. And uh, if there's a way of mapping it, and how is it? You make yeah, yeah, you make some answers, <laughs> some questions, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we know no, him, eh? No, we are working in, in this line to try to how find data in these phenomena. So the last project is talking about the people who is sleeping in the street. No, these people we don't know how many. I, we don't know how many they they are. No, so we are trying to find how to put a number to do the, to these phenomena. For this reason, we are trying to experiment and find how many people we need to to draw a city. No, this is what we will do. No. Um, I think that um, the, in the digital tools also we have the answer to, to do this process. No? In, the, in the case of the project of Arrels, we have done, I think, that a complete atlas of Barcelona to share to volunteer teams, no? and each one will draw a piece of the city. They give us, we will scan in one night, in one night we will make a map of all the city. No? So we will, we will bring the analogical data to digital data. I think if all goes well in three hours, no? And because this kind of process, we, we need them. So when we have begin with our work, the ratification of the city was very low. Now it's higher, and we are convinced that it will be more higher. So uh, we have uh, the problem that today a lot of interesting data is in the hands of the companies, on the private companies. And here is the, uh, yeah, yeah. 
the complexity, no? How councils they ask this com this, these companies to have also the, this data about his citizens, no? Because perhaps you have informal housing, but you have cell phones, no? And perhaps you have a market, no? And but you have uh, some um, some money in the interchange, and you have some kind of uh, activity that you can trace. The problem is that a lot of times this information is in the companies and and we think that uh, it will be uh, so and also that the law is evolving in this direction that this data will mm, we need to belong to the city council and the citizens of course no in this Two more. Are, are you fine for two more questions? Yeah. Yeah. Uriol, and you. Um, thank you for your presentation. Hey. And um, I really enjoyed the the map and the drawings and everything. But I do understand that um, it can affect the policy, urban policies, or like the future design of the urban area. But how do you think this will affect as an architect, like designing like a small area of a building? Maybe it, maybe it won't affect, or I don't know. And that's my first question. And my second question is, is there a specific reason why you chose Madrid for a um, comparison? Because I feel like the Madrid has a different characteristic hmm. than Barcelona, so I don't know. I don't know. For example, we have discovered in the innovation in the geographies of the innovation that perhaps the eighty percent of the research centers in Barcelona they are not well placed. So one of the conclusions of the study was that uh, perhaps the buildings are very cool and they are very nice and they are in a very good places in the city, in front of the sea, in the mountain. No, they are in a, in these places very uh, yeah pri yeah with privilege. No, but uh, they they are wrong decisions because they are, they doesn't have a urban fabric where to make the uh, no uh, yeah, a, tra a transference of this activity to the urban fabric. So we have discovered that this is like a plant. If you put something in the wrong, um, yeah, in the wrong earth, or in the wrong in the wrong earth, you will don't have you will don't obtain anything, no. So and this is the same. We can see research centers in Barcelona with a lot of money of investment and without nothing around them of interest, no. So how to decide where we put our wind or building? is uh, I think the first uh, the first step no and if this is the most important for the success of this of this building after you will have a lot of information about which is uh, who are the users who are, how is the population where where the how is the, the the memory of the people of this place no you, you have a lot of layers if you want to 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 look them no if you want to use for your project you have more more information than, than ever in this sense. And the other question was? Sorry, the other question? Uh, ah, why Madrid? Why Madrid? Ah, because the commissioner was... <laughs> was here. We have clients and they, <laughs> and they decide something. No, but, but it was really interesting because, you know, uh, we l work a lot in Barcelona and it was really nice to confront no, to another reality, no, as we are doing now in Ukraine or in Madrid, because we didn't expect the answer and that was really you know, amazing as a work, no, to be able to work you know, in another city. <laughs> no, no, easy. Um, first of all, I, I want to thank you for your presentation. I think it was very inspiring. And for the students that uh, took your seminar, I think that it was like a step forward or what to look for. So uh, I'm really glad about that. And my question is about time. 
what or how do you see time in those cartographies or how you can deal with time if it's another layer or if it's something that has to drive the project um, because when we go to the municipality to get some documents for creating a building the problem is that the data is always outdated always no? <laughs> so in that sense with these new technologies that can be solved not easier but at least faster no? uh, so and then the question is how can that uh, the data or the parameter data of time can be applied uh, to the whole, this whole process of seeing the city in a, in a different way. Yes, I, I think that um, we have a lot to do in this sense. Uh, absolutely, it's very difficult to draw data uh, with time, no? draw a timeline in a map. So uh, we have a lot of dimensions of, of, of time. Um, so we have the problem of how to draw the evolution of time in a, in a map, and this is a, a deal, and this is, our, this is a, um, a good deal because uh, is when we can explain a lot of, a lot of things if we do this. But also there is this idea that we need to change our concept uh, about analyze some phenomena uh, with a timeline. So when we work with big data, it's not interesting, the past data. Because the past data is obsolete in the sense that the data is, cons is built in another way that uh, how we take the data today. For example, if you take Facebook today, it's different the use today from yesterday. No? And in this sense, uh, we need to work with um, with short uh, time sets. No? This is a uh, when you work with a statistical approach. Usually, you want to take a data set from 1, 19, 80, no, and <laughs> no, and compare an evolution. No, today the evolutions mm, are not possible to to do because the quality of the data change every every month. Uh, for this reason, uh, we we need to work with hard workflows in our works. So uh, the problem is not to do a representation, instead to have the workflow to repeat it in a in a moment. No. So for example, now we are working for Ukraine. We will, uh, I yeah, think, in two deliver. in two weeks, we need to deliver the project, and we have all the workflow for one through three hours before the, the final. Yeah. <laughs> no. The, the, the final, click. the final click to rebuild all the information because we know that perhaps these years we will have some problems in Ukraine and we will need to remake all what all this history. So uh, it's obsessive then the time. No, it's obsessive the problem of how we draw it. We don't have timelines. We have instance and there is this instance. They have a lot, a lot, a lot of information. So we we analyze this uh, this short time. And and how to be uh, how don't be outdated? No, mm -hmm. it's uh, it's a problem of workflow. No, so we design the, the document with the workflow to to generate. So it it's, it's uh, what we can do. <laughs> <laughs> A border. Yep. Uh, again. So, if you can see time as a border for the activities in the city. We, no, the, the time is the dimension. No, is the dimension of the city because you can see, you can see uses in one time, no, at one hour and uses in another place in another hour, no. And when you see together, you are you see like we have the city in movement, no. And what we see is that we don't have, uh, I think that we don't have borders. So when we talk about time, it's to explain that it's not possible to say that here we have 200 people. This is what say the the cart the municipal cartography. No, we have 200. I don't know at what time of day. No, because sometimes we have 100. Sometimes we have 500. No, and the time is moving. No, and and the people too. No, and this is idea is that we dissolve the borders. No, and we are not able to say here it's happening things because this here doesn't exist because the time. This is the no, and. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, because this is the, the problem about how to, uh, today when we talk about the users in the city, we have a high complexity. We, we want to, to discover how to explain very well these users, no? And put uh, high accuracy, no? And the problem is the time, is the factor of the time, because it's, we can draw a, a universal city, no? In a neutral time. All, all doubts solve it. <laughs> <laughs> we are going, don't worry, we're going to speak again about um, the possibilities and challenges of urban planning next week uh, on Wednesday with another faculty of uh, the Master in City and Technology, uh, Bruno Moser, who is the um, partner, partner at uh, Foster, uh, Foster and Partner and uh, the head of uh, a urban planning group at uh, Foster and Partner. So, and who is going to speak about the urban growth and the challenge of infrastructure. So, if you are probably interested to this lecture, uh, next week's lecture is going to be as well very interesting for you. But now, let's uh, again thank uh, Mar and Pablo and let's have a, a beer together with them. Thanks. <laughs>